This video will demonstrate how to solve a certain type of logic puzzle. Um, this type of puzzle used to be very popular. You could uh, buy them in magazines at the same places that you buy crossword puzzles. Uh, these days, Sudoku has sort of taken over the logic puzzle market. In fact, this puzzle is a little bit like doing Sudoku, but it's doing in a context where you're given a story. Um, in my logic classes, I usually give this type of a puzzle as a bonus at the end of the semester, and the purpose is to invite people to make connections between their intuitive logic abilities, which is what these puzzles are about, and the type of stuff that we've been doing in class, which is completely symbolic. And in a symbolic logic class, you try to bring all the logical rules and maneuvering into consciousness and make it very explicit. But in a puzzle like this, you're working in a completely intuitive way. As many people know, the LSAT, the test that you take to get into law school, has a couple of logic sections on it, and the logic that is tested on the LSAT turns out to be much more like these intuitive puzzles than the sort of thing that we study in a symbolic logic class. All right, well, let's just jump in and get started. Um, in most respects, this is very easy, uh, so don't overthink it. Now, in a puzzle like this, you always get a little story that sets up the scene. And here it says that every year, the town of Hoppersville holds a week-long tournament of games. And this year, each of five residents, here's the residents, won a different competition. Here are the games they played on a different day. And there's the five weekdays. From the info, determine who won what when. So there were five days, five people, five games. And in logic puzzles, you generally don't have to worry, hey, did somebody win two games and things like that? No, it's usually a one-to-one-to-one -to -one -to -one correspondence. We're also given these three sentences that provide some basic information. I like to think of these as the premises. And the first thing we want to do is extract the information from the premises and get it into the grid. So it says, neither Thomas, who didn't win on Tuesday, nor Kirsty is the person who won Thursday's hopscotch competition. All right, well, that basically tells us that neither Thomas nor Kirsty won on Thursday. And let's use an X to denote a negative correlation. They didn't win on Thursday, and they didn't win hopscotch. So some more Xs. It also told us up here in parentheses that Thomas didn't win on Tuesday. And then notice there's one more really valuable piece of information. It says the person who won Thursday's hopscotch. Ah, so that means that hopscotch itself was on Thursday. So let's use a dot to denote a positive correlation. Now, here's an example of the type of thing that I invite you to be thinking about as you're doing these puzzles and making connections with the sort of thing that we've, we've been doing in class. When I put in this dot, I can immediately put in all the rest of the X's in this column and in this row. You'll notice that the table here is composed of three 5x5 five five grids. And as soon as you get in a dot, you get to put in all these X's as well. Here's the thinking that justifies this. If hopscotch is on Thursday, then it's not on Monday, and it's not on Tuesday, and it's not on Wednesday, and it's not on Friday. And if hopscotch is on Thursday, then neither jacks, nor pickup sticks, nor skittles, nor tiddlywinks was on Thursday. Notice that long sentence is just an extraordinary string of if, thens, ands, nots, and ors. And, you know, it, and yet we're sort of thinking these relations with incredible ease. All right, uh, next sentence. Renee won the Skittles tournament, but not on Tuesday. So Renee won Skittles. There's another dot. And as soon as you put in a dot, go ahead and put in the relevant X's. She won Skittles, but she didn't win it on Tuesday. So Renee did not win on Tuesday. But moreover, that means that Skittles couldn't have been on Tuesday. And so let's go to Skittles on Tuesday and get another X. And then Monday's winner was Victorious and Jacks. So that means Monday and Jacks gets a dot right there, 
plus all the x's. Dots are good. Okay, uh, third sentence. Wendy, who won on Friday, is not the Tiddlywinx champion. All right, Wendy won on Friday. A dot plus x's. But she is not the Tiddlywinx champion. And so that means we have to have an x here in Tiddlywinks. And also, what does that tell us? That Tiddlywinks couldn't have been played on Friday, so another x. At this point, we're done with the premises. We've extracted all the useful information and gotten it onto the grid. And now, we can make progress just by comparing the three grids to each other. I should point out that in the bonus that I typically give at the end of the semester, once you've extracted the information from the premises, you make some progress, and then it's a good idea to go back to the premises, and sometimes one or two of those premises will actually provide you additional information later on. So this is an especially easy sample puzzle. But after you've extracted all the information, a great way to make progress is to focus on the dots. So notice this dot tells us that Wendy won on Friday. Well, what games could have been played on Friday? And notice the answers are pick up sticks and skittles. So that means that Wendy had to win either pick up sticks or skittles. But if we go down here, it tells us that she didn't win skittles. Therefore, the only thing she could have won would be pick up sticks. So we'll put in the dot plus the x's. Notice what we actually just did. We said Wendy had to win either pick up sticks or skittles. In symbols, that would be pick up sticks, wedge, skittles. But then we said she couldn't win skittles, so that's not skittles. Therefore, she had to win pick up sticks. We actually just did disjunctive argument, but we did it in a really intuitive and simple way. So if you make a little bit of effort to sort of think about consciously what you're doing in your head as you're doing the logic puzzle, that's really what I have in mind. Um, so notice we said that Wendy won pickup sticks. We know that pickup sticks uh, that Wendy won on Friday. That means that pickup sticks itself had to be played on Friday. So dot plus x's. And now notice what just happened in this five by five grid. In the Skittles column, the only day that's left is Wednesday, so that had to be the day it was played. Tiddlywinks, therefore, had to be played on Tuesday. We have finished this 5x5 five five grid. Notice there's one dot per column, and there's one dot per row, and that's always the way that it should be. All right, so all of that happened because we started with a particular dot. Sometimes the dots are this helpful, sometimes they're not. Sometimes if, you, if the dots aren't helping you, it's great to start where you have just a couple openings. So notice, we know that Thomas won on either Monday or Wednesday. Well, that means that he had to win either Jacks or Skittles, because that's the games that was played on, those, those are the games that were played on Monday and Wednesday. So let's take a look. Jacks or Skittles. And we come down here and we see that, well, Thomas could not have won Skittles, so here's another disjunctive argument. That means he had to have won jacks. So we put in the dot plus the x's. And at this point, we can now say, well, since Thomas won jacks and jacks was played on Monday, Thomas had to have played on Monday. And we put the dot plus x's. In fact, at this point, the rest of this puzzle is really easy we see that hopscotch had to have been won by Mac, dot plus x's, and that means that tiddlywinks had to be won by Kirsty. One dot per column, one dot per row, and now the rest of this we can read it off of the fact that hopscotch was won by Mac, hopscotch was played on Thursday, so that means Mac won on Thursday, dot plus x's. And now it looks like Kirsty had to be had to have won on Tuesday, and that means that Renee had to win on Wednesday. And success, we have finished the puzzle.
All right, well, I hope that you will enjoy the logic puzzle. If you're interested in doing more of these, there's a company called Penny Press, which used to publish a lot of these. I believe they still exist, probably at www.pennypress.com. I mention them because this puzzle is actually a, a, a sample warming up puzzle that, uh, that they explain in one of their books. All right, thanks.